Over the last few years, Jehovah's Witnesses have focused more and more of their ministry into what they call Special Metropolitan Witnessing, or as I like to call it, the cart work. It's a less intrusive form of preaching where Jehovah's Witnesses are spared the embarrassment of knocking on strangers' doors and normal people are spared the nuisance. But sometimes this seemingly painless form of preaching will backfire on the Witnesses once they are approached by someone who can use half of their brain. So today, dear viewer, we are going to watch two short videos of JWs being confronted at the carts. First by an evangelical preacher, then by a well-known atheist, to see how well Jehovah's Witnesses can defend their faith. It's such a fascinating case study, so put yourself in the shoes of these JWs and let me know in the comments how do you think you would have reacted if you were still a believer confronted by these strangers. Now let's roll the first clip. I'm just a cart made up of bits and pieces, a frame, a handle, and some stop wheels. It, stop it, please, I beg you! Hey, what's going on, family? So we're downtown Orlando, and I see some Jehovah's Witnesses posted up over there. We're just gonna go over there and interview them and um, see what they believe in, and just uh, trying to use apologetics. The first video we're gonna watch is by Richard Lorenzo Jr., founder of the Remnant Revival Outreach Movement. All right, the video is titled, Pastor rebukes a Jehovah's Witness. Must watch. So look what happens when a Bible thumping evangelical confronts a JW. Nice to meet you. Um, so what do you guys? What, what is like? Is this uh, Christianity? Is it something different? Or yes, we consider ourselves to be Christians, and we have uh, a nice uh, page on our website that's for anybody in the news field to look at can answer a lot of questions when it comes to what our beliefs are and uh, so okay. I could certainly show you how to uh, find that page on the website if you'd like more information. Okay and is this, is this like a supervisor or like the pastor? You the pastor? No, we're all ministers. Oh, ministers, okay. So um, would you guys be cool with the interview too or just asking a few questions? Not you? Okay. What is it concerning? Asking questions about this? I don't know. Okay. Um, are you well, Section on our website, yes. For media. Mm -hmm. um, so there's there's uh, a mm -hmm. section that answers questions concerning our activity and, and all of that. So. so you guys don't you guys don't really know, but you guys you guys you guys just uh, push everyone to the website, but you guys don't really know what the your belief your beliefs are. No, we, we do, but we we just uh, would would like you to visit the website. As you may know, Jehovah's Witnesses are trained beforehand to direct all media outlets to their website instead of, you know, directly answering questions themselves. That's why the brother in the sidelines is pointing this guy to the website, even though he's not really a media outlet, but okay. He's just following the directions of the branch. So the way you guys, um, I guess, share your beliefs and your religion is through a website? No comment. You? No, I'm finished too, but thank you. Such a powerful witness. I mean, is it the website that answers the questions? I don't... I don't... Well, it certainly does, yeah. But wouldn't you guys know you, what you believe in? Certainly. So then why wouldn't you guys speak about what you believe in instead of pointing people to a website? Because that's not our purpose to be standing here at the moment. So your guys' purpose is to stand here and point people to a website? That's one of the things we do, yes. Man. If you would like, you can give us your contact information and we can pass it to someone and they may reach out to you and answer all of your questions. So you guys don't know the answers to the questions or the things you believe in. You guys point it to a website and somebody else. If you can leave us your contact information, uh, we'd be happy to pass it on. Sounds like an automated uh, response. Damn, this guy has no chill. Yeah, they do sound like robots. Directing people to a website is like God's customer support. I'll tell you this, though. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the death, burial, and resurrection and that he's the fullness of God bodily that this is actually pointing people the wrong direction. It's, it's a false gospel. It's called legalism. It's what the Pharisees did. They stood on the corners. They tried to look religious. And now it's this modern day pharisaical stuff is 2023. We point people to websites. I, I know the gospel. If anyone asks me, a Muslim, a Catholic, a Jehovah's Witness, I could be able to defend the gospel because I'm an actual ordained minister of God and confirmed by men. So what I would say is, instead of pointing people to a website and in fear, not knowing if you're going to heaven or hell, not even knowing if there is a hell or where people's souls go when they die, 
seek the scriptures, not by man and not by somebody who, who figured out the scriptures in 1970-something and, and figured out a new revelation and actually studied it so yourself approved and received the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that the, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will receive power. On the day of Pentecost, tarry in Jerusalem to receive power. And the Bible says you'll cast out devils, heal the sick, speak in new tongues, raise the dead. And those are things we're seeing still today. So I would highly recommend you guys would honestly repent. Richard just keeps preaching on for a minute. You know, the usual Jesus died for your sins thing. But the witnesses don't even try to answer him. They just keep dead quiet. Now, first of all, I think this pastor's claims are just as baseless as Watchtower's claims. If you viewed my channel for some time, you know I'm not a big fan of Christian apologists, especially those claiming to cure the sick and speak in tongues. But with that being said, I did appreciate that Richard could at least stand up to his beliefs and articulate them in a thoughtful manner. The witnesses, on the other hand, didn't even try to open their Bibles. They never even mentioned Jehovah or Jesus. I mean, this was the perfect chance for them to show Richard why his gospel is wrong and why he needs to get out of Babylon the Great before Armageddon sweeps his ass away. But instead, we get crickets. And the lady didn't even say a single word. Now, to be honest, I think debating JWs on doctrinal matters is mostly pointless. They're already predisposed to reject any other variant of Christianity as false. I mean, the witnesses in this video probably dismissed Richard as some religious loony, but directly asking JWs to explain their beliefs is effective, since it forces them to articulate their own dogma in their own words and possibly make them question the soundness of their own beliefs. And I do have to praise Richard on that front, because he focused on asking questions, at least before he went full preacher mode. <laughs> and I think that's great. That forever they'll remember me. And this strategy of asking questions is also employed by the next speaker who we're gonna be watching. This is Aaron Ra, the complete opposite of Richard. Aaron is one of the biggest atheist content creators on YouTube. He has an excellent series on evolution and his unapologetic takedowns of creationism are an absolute treat to watch. This guy is ruthless and even though he does look like a cartoon villain, he's actually really smart. Well, in this video, Jehovah's Witnesses had the bright idea to set up their carts in front of an atheist convention. <laughs> yeah, guess how that's gonna turn out. Sadly, the audio is pretty terrible, but I added some subtitles for your enjoyment. Let's watch. Bible study every week. I haven't seen anything that I could that I could possibly interpret as hope for something. So where is that? Well, that's why I asked. Like in Revelation 21, 3 and 4 it talks about a time when the things that we see existing in the world today don't exist. Revelation 21, 3 and 4. The one Bible verse that all Jehovah's Witnesses know by heart. I mean too bad it's like 
the only one they know. I try to be tentative. The most important thing for me is truth. And therefore, I don't want to be fooled into believing anything that is not evidently true. I leave it to the obvious. If it's not evidently true, if it's something you can't confirm, well, then you take the position that maybe it's true and maybe it isn't. But in the case of the Bible, we know for absolutely certain Adam and Eve is a parable based on elder mythology from Mesopotamia primarily. We know the global flood never happened, the Tower of Babel never happened, the Exodus never happened. I've interviewed a whole lot of Bible scholars. That stuff ain't real. That's what you believe. That's not what I believe. It's what we can demonstrate. We can prove the global flood never happened. And then if it did happen, that would only be a blight against the idea of God. We believe what the Bible says. Why? It's Why don't you believe what the Bhagavad Gita says? It's truth. It's not truth. It's lies. That's your... No, that's demonstrable. The truth is what the facts are, what we can show to be true. We can show that the Bible is not true. Now you do. Ding, ding, ding. It's time for a quiz, guys. What will the Jehovah's Witnesses do next? A. Pull out a Bible to defend their beliefs. B. Use a publication from their cart to explain their worldview. Or C. Argue that the Genesis stories do not have to be taken literally. You guessed it right, it's D. Point Aaron to the website. Well, if you guys have more questions, you can go visit the website. Um, but something that we don't like to do is but debate, you know, because... That's what I want. I want the interaction. I want to know why you guys are bought into this. Well, we're not bought into it. Like I said, you can always go visit our website. You're not bought into it. You're not standing out here pushing placards. That you're, you're not. You're not here right now. I'm just. This is an illusion. Well, not, like I said, you could always go to the website if you have more questions. And who's going to answer them? How am I going to reason with the website? Well, something that you could do. I mean, it's just like anything. You could sit down, read the read whatever it is, right? Because how do we acknowledge? How research. do we? It's part of research. That's yeah. all I do. Yeah. So let us be whatever it is that is this for you. Well, it's just information. Website. Yeah. Stuff in, on the website. Okay. Because you know what I said about the truth is what the facts are, what you can show to be true, right? Not whatever else we might assume or imagine the honor instead of that. Okay. So every religion proclaims their collection of lies to be the absolute truth and revealed word of one true God, even if they can't agree on who the God is. So none of that is true, therefore. They can't show, no religion can show that they are any truer than every other one. Yeah, and, and here's the thing. Uh, we ourselves, right, as Jehovah's Witnesses, we don't try to enforce any way to do anything. Okay. So, I mean, we respect your opinion. We do. Okay. Um, so, I mean, if you don't believe in, in the Bible, then it's okay. I believe right. in reason, so that okay. means I want to reason with you. All right. Well, well the, the thing we don't do is we reason don't... Reason with people. We don't... <laughs> no, we don't try to debate. So Aaron did a great job with his presentation. I mean, he's this very tall, imposing dude. Uh, I know if I was still a witness and he approached me, I would be kind of intimidated by him, but he kept his distance, his hands behind his back. He used a soft tone of voice and that's really commendable. Although both videos feature very different characters. I mean, one is a devout Christian and the other a staunch atheist. The response from the witnesses was very similar. Both Richard and Aaron used questions effectively, because instead of outright trying to prove the JWs wrong, they asked them to express their beliefs in their own words. Because when you ask someone to explain their beliefs, you make them think of the reasons why they believe what they do. I mean, most Jehovah's Witnesses would agree that snakes can't talk, but somehow they believe a snake was talking in the Garden of Eden, and when Aaron asked them why they believe such a silly thing, they just froze. <laughs> These good questions can make an indoctrinated person ponder on the reasons for belief and possibly even open the door for them to start questioning their own dogma. These weren't difficult questions at all. Neither Richard or Aaron talked about Watchtower failed prophecies or the CSA lawsuits or anything too controversial. They focused on asking simple questions and I think that's the best way to reason with the Jehovah's Witness. So if you have JWs in your neighborhood and you have a chance to engage with them, ask them what they believe. Don't let them point you to a website. Keep insisting so that they explain their dogma in their own words. Like this comment says, let's normalize just walking up to people doing crap like this 
and publicly questioning their irrational beliefs. I totally agree. YouTube is filled with videos like these where Jehovah's Witnesses are questioned at the cards and surprise surprise, they're very ill-equipped to defend their faith. And honestly, I don't blame them because it's very difficult to defend the belief system, which is not only unbiblical, but also cruel and apocalyptic. And I think these kind of videos will just keep coming, especially now that Watchtower is focusing more and more in the cart ministries, and more of the general public becomes aware of the most distasteful aspects of the Watchtower doctrine. And hopefully, who knows, maybe some of these witnesses eventually wake up as they are forced to express their own horrific dogma in their own words and in front of the whole world. Well, let me know what you thought of this video in the comments below and don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and all that good stuff. And check out Aaron Ra's channel as well, it's excellent, he has a really good series on evolution and his takedowns of the global flood story are absolutely epic. And if you would like to support my work, please check me out on Patreon or joining the YouTube channel. Guys, this channel would not be possible without your support, so Thank you to my beautiful Patreon community and everyone who has become a channel member. Take it easy guys, have a wonderful day and stay away from the tower. Berakata, Besekete, Rokote Kele Kete 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 Kete